My current situation is not my final destination. Throughout my years, I have met a lot of people who are content with staying in the same place that they have always known. Change is big for some people, and trying something new can be too much. I used to be like them, never thinking about what's out there. I was okay with the idea of limiting myself to the things I already had, and I never gave much thought to evolving. However, I have been fortunate enough to come across people and opportunities that have challenged my way of thinking. One of my earliest memories, being downtown, was my first ride on the train. When I was four or five years old, my mother had made the big step of getting her US citizenship. In order to get that, she needed to complete some paperwork at an office downtown. At the time, I thought we were just running errands, like any other day. When we got into the, onto the train headed towards downtown, I felt scared by the crowds. I had never been in such a position before, riding with strangers. As the train moved, I saw the buildings of the neighborhood I had always known disappear and transform into skyscrapers that resemble giants. I had rarely ventured outside my neighborhood of West Lawn. The biggest city I had ever heard of was New York City, thanks to Home Alone 2, a childhood favorite of mine. In my four-year-old mind, it seemed possible that 40 minutes on the train could take you anywhere. When we got off the train platform in the loop, we were surrounded by people rushing to get to their destinations. I was with my family, but I felt so isolated and afraid of losing them in the crowd. After my mom filled out her paperwork at the office, she thought it would be a good idea for us to explore downtown the rest of the day. As we walked, I felt intimidated by all the businessmen with their expensive suits and their heavy looking suitcases. Although the places I had seen that day were beautiful, the only thing I wanted to do was go home and play my Nintendo 64. I felt so out of my comfort zone. That was until my parents made the wise choice to stop for ice cream. To a four-year-old, there is nothing that can't be solved by a good scoop of ice cream. On the ride home, I was feeling much happier. This ice cream got me thinking, maybe the place we were visiting wasn't so bad after all. I looked up at my parents and I told them, wow, I love New York. It wasn't until my parents stopped laughing that they explained to me that we hadn't even left the city. We were still in Chicago. I was so blown away after learning that the place with the huge buildings and the scary businessmen were still part of Chicago. Before that first trip downtown, Chicago to me only consisted of the rugged city blocks pertaining to the Hispanic culture I had always known. As you walk along the block, you can see hopscotch marks on the sidewalk and hear everyone greeting each other. Hola, como estas? I grew up with a lot of neighbors who were my age. We rode our bikes together and played outside on the street until the dreaded moment when the street lights would come on. These lights signified that our fun was over. I hated hearing the moment my mother would call out to me. Ya metate, se esta poniendo oscuro. I would groan and argue, begging to stay out later and play with my friends. But I didn't realize that our parents had a valid reason for wanting us inside before dark. Growing up, I wasn't aware that bad things ever happened, or exist that, existed for that matter. I was oblivious to the violence that occurred outside my block. Despite all the good things about our neighborhood, my parents knew there were downsides to it. I remember walking down the street and admiring the doodles that people had left on the sides of garages. I didn't understand why my mom disapproved of them. I just thought she had something against art. As a child, I envisioned the future as me living next door to my parents and growing up with the same neighborhood friends. I was puzzled. Why would anyone want to leave such a great neighborhood? My parents, however, were set on leaving. They were always talking about buying a new house and moving far, far away. This was the last thing I could have wanted. All of my great memories had been created in, the, in West Lawn. 13 was a big year for me. I was about to graduate from middle school, and I was excited to start high school. At the time, I couldn't think of a better way to spend my time after school than by going to my best friend's house, two blocks away. It was a typical Sunday afternoon when I started the seven minute walk to my friend's house. As I approached the corner of my block, I noticed someone in the passenger seat of a van staring at me intently through the window. I continued walking, unbothered, but the van stopped in the same corner I was passing through. 
The passenger door opened, and out came a man that quickly approached me. I thought he would just ask me for directions and be on his way, but instead, he demanded the gold necklace hanging around my neck that I had received from my first communion. I expected Ashton Kutcher to come out from the alley and tell me I'd been punked, because in my head, it was like a cruel joke. I stopped breathing, and if it wasn't for the gun that he held so strongly in his hand, I would have ran back home to the protective embrace of my parents. This was the first real-world experience I had had where something bad personally happened to me. Before this, the worst thing that could have happened to me was for getting to save a video game. It made sense to me now why my parents always wanted me to come inside before dark. It hit me that the stories on the news that made my dad look so worried weren't just about other places. Those bad things happened in my neighborhood, the place I called home. That day, it wasn't just my necklace that was stolen, but it was my sense of security. After the incident, <clears throat> I was even more excited to start high school. I needed a distraction. I walked in thinking I would get the full Mean Girls experience, instant popularity, and all the cool parties. I even had my pink wardrobe ready for Wednesdays. Unfortunately, the first few months of my high school experience did not meet my expectations at all. The majority of my neighborhood friends had chosen to attend different high schools. I had decided to attend Hubbard High School. I barely knew anyone, and it was hard for me to make friends because of how shy I had become. I wanted to escape my neighborhood and my high school. I fantasized about living somewhere mysterious and exciting, somewhere completely different from West Lawn. Another favorite childhood movie of mine was The Parent Trap. My favorite scenes were the rainy shots of London. I've always loved the rain, and I imagine only my own cozy apartment there. However, I didn't realize how much money it would cost to get there. How would I get the money I needed to create a new life for myself? I decided to get my first job as an usher at Airy Crown Theater. It wasn't the best job, but it put money in my piggy bank. Since the theater was located next to Lakeshore Drive, it gave me the chance to explore downtown, the place with big buildings and intimidating businessmen that I remember from when I was four. Now that I was 16, downtown wasn't as intimidating. It occurred to me that downtown was full of things to do, and I started to enjoy the time I spent there, and not just for the ice cream. It was nice knowing that I didn't have to travel all the way to New York to get the full big city experience. The weekends I spent working as an usher were the highlight of my sophomore year. But during the week, during the week, I was so stuck in my boring high school with my boring classmates and my boring assignments. High school is what you make of it, and so far, I hadn't done much worth remembering. The day that I heard about Genesis Works was the day that ch changed my life for the better. My classmates and I were called into assembly in the auditorium. Having all of the students packed into one room made everyone irritable and loud. So loud that it was almost impossible to hear what was being said but I managed to get snippets of what the assembly was about. The words paid internship and working downtown were what intrigued me. It seemed like an opportunity with my name written on it, and I just had to take it. The first week of Genesis, work tra Genesis Works training ended with an event called Team Up. All of the participants were gathered in their gym, and I did not know a single person. I was reminded of my first trip downtown, feeling isolated and intimidated. As training continued, I became more comfortable with my peers, who had the same goal as me, earning an internship. The day we found out whether or not we earned our internship was nerve-wracking. My, my peers and I gathered around the screen that was going to determine our futures. Then they announced to us that everyone in the room would be working in an internship their senior year, and everyone went crazy. Finding out that I would be interning at TransUnion was one of the best moments I have had. Like I said before, high school is what you make of it, and I finally felt like I was doing something memorable. Almost a month ago, I was introduced to my new professional lifestyle at TransUnion. Walking through the big doors felt surreal, almost like I had skipped my, the rest of my teenage years and jumped into my adult life. I'm still getting the hang of being around adults for most of the day, but the weeks I have worked there have been nothing but wonderful. My teammate Christine has been welcoming since the first day and has helped me become accustomed to TransUnion. 
Once again, my current situation is not my final destination. I am only 17, but I am hoping that in the next few months, I continue becoming a professional and becoming more comfortable with the opportunities I encounter. I have come to learn that downtown isn't just a place to explore and take artsy pictures for Instagram, but it's a place to put your ambition to work. Before I started high school, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. I could have easily ended up like any of the other kids in my high school, following the crowd and never leaving West Lawn. But becoming a part of Genesis Works has opened my eyes and helped me realize I can get further in life than I ever imagined. A lot of my friends are just winging it, but I want to have a plan. This program has already helped me come out of my comfort zone, and I am sure that it will benefit me when the time comes for college. I am confident that the many places I will explore in the future will be great, and not just for the ice cream. 